Hey guys, welcome back to the garage. And today, uh, I'm gonna be putting on a new steering wheel on the black pickup, the black C1500. I'm doing this not just to put a steering wheel on the truck. Uh, I usually wouldn't just go out and buy a steering wheel when I didn't need one. Um, but the Suburban, actually needs one. The, stack, the stock steering wheel on the Suburban is super chewed up and it's just, it feels gross holding it. So I wanted to get a new steering wheel, but I don't wanna buy a stock steering wheel and I don't wanna put money on a racing steering wheel for you know the Suburban. It's just a beater four wheel drive. So, Uh, I was thinking I'd get a racing steel steering wheel for the race truck and then I can take the stock steering wheel from that truck and put it on the Suburban. So both vehicles get a new steering wheel. Let me show you what the Suburban steering wheel looks like real quick. So it was like this when I got it and I don't know if they were carving at it with a knife because it's like slivers carved off, like someone was bored just sitting here chipping at it. And it's not soft at all anymore. It's super hard for some reason. And it just doesn't feel, it just feels gross and chunky. So you just wanna pick up one of these tools. You can rent these from any auto parts store. This is from AutoZone. And let's see, that's your part number right there. That'll work well enough. And then it's the master steering wheel and lock plate remover set. I'm gonna start by this, removing this cover, it just peels off. And then the horn hooks to it that I forgot about. So don't do what I just did. That's another thing. I probably won't have a horn anymore, you know, when you go quick release, because we're not just replacing the steering wheel. I'm putting a quick release coupler in there. Let's take a look at that, actually, before we get started. The sun is just... Jesus. So we got the Grant quick release, and uh, this video wasn't going to be about the quality of these guys, but... I've never bought a steering wheel before, and I've definitely, well, I've never bought a steering wheel before. And, but I've always heard Grant were the best. You know, it's just what I grew up hearing, it's, I don't know, there's a lot more companies out there today than there used to be, I don't know, 20 years ago when I first started getting into cars. Uh, but getting one for the first time, I must say, I'm a little like let down the machining work is a little shoddy like the ends are just kind of blown out there you can see that whoop there and the end of it there same on the other side like it's just sloppy machinery and uh the felt i didn't realize this was felt to begin with i thought this would have been a painted piece but it's felt And which wouldn't be a big deal. It's not really a big deal. Um, but on the back is where it's I'm let down again. I mean, this style of... I don't know. Seems like it's just going to peel apart really easily. There's a space there in the crotch, if you call it that. It's not even covered. The seams are jagged and uneven. I mean, it's pretty ghetto looking. Not happy with that part at all. The rest of the handle, however, I mean, this is just molded stuff. Like, it's not actually anything wrapped around it. It's just dunked in some sort of mold, it feels like. There's these casting seams here. Uh, this stuff feels all right. I don't know how long it's gonna last, but 
I don't know. It is what it is. The coupler, on the other hand, or the quick release coupler, now this is a fine piece of machinery. This is nice. We'll have to take off those five bolts and hopefully it matches up to this. It looks like it's meant to. And then this is really nice. There's a spline in here and you squeeze it together. Don't fall on the ground. There we go. It's a super tight fit inside of here. This will bolt onto the steering column just like the old steering wheel would. And that's it. It should be super simple. I did watch another video before I did this and it was on a yellow car. I don't remember the name of it or something or anything, but uh, it was on a yellow car and this guy was putting in all kinds of extra pieces. Like the little black accordion piece and then the black cup backwards and he made a plate. I like the plate idea. So we might have to make a plate just to clean it up, but that'll be afterwards. Um, but with me having the quick release coupler, I don't think I'll need to make anything. It's just going to be that bare mechanical kind of look, you know, that bare race car look. Which is okay with me in this truck. So let's uh, find out what socket that is, what size socket that steering wheel is, and get started. First, we got to get that clip out of here. And you could probably get that done with a screwdriver. I know, but I got the right tool, so that's cool. So 22 is close, but it's actually a 13 16. So in this kit, it's going to be the black ones all the way to the left. What does that say? 5 16 by four and a quarter or four and a half so five sixteenths by 18 so first make sure that cap is on there you're gonna thread this through and then put that cap on there because that will go against your steering wheel column there and pull out on the studs probably only gonna take not very much oh look see it's already loose Steering wheel's free. Yay, that easy. Now this kit comes with the quick release coupler, the spline adapter, three bolts for here, I guess. And that's the only, I mean. And then uh, some instructions. Front and back. Uh, I guess you could get parts maybe like that's all those parts I was talking about earlier You might be able to get your horn to work with some of those pieces But like in the other video that put that guy's steering wheel in his face, you know relatively speaking so Oh, there it goes So yeah, but it's pushing this plastic piece way out of the way and that's when I turn it's gonna be like boop 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 you know, it'll just break it. So we're gonna remove that and no more horn. So we're gonna set up the black adapter again. The larger black adapter with the big flared end goes over. And the smaller horseshoe thingy. And then you thread on the nut. And that's only gonna go down like a that spring is only gonna compress a little bit. You can get look in there. We're looking to expose the lock ring in the groove. And it's not touching anymore. But the more room we can get in there the better. And that feels about it. Yeah, it's you're not gonna get much further than that. You just gotta get the lock plate off that ring. Then you gotta figure out how to pry the ring out. So with a really good set of these guys, maybe even smaller than what I got, that was barely big enough to fit in between the gap. And a mechanic's pick on the other end of it. I don't have three arms or I would have used one to hold the camera. But spread it apart enough to get the mechanic's pick on this side and just peel it up, work it up the shaft there.
actually instead of struggling once you get it popped you might be able to let the spring do the work for you we're gonna stand out of the line of fire as long as there's tension it shouldn't go anywhere right oh I need to undo those plastic I think there's those two Torx bits inside of here and there. I think that has to come undone. So those are a T15. And I already broke the bottom or the left side one there. It looks like it's all loose there. actually kind of like what keeps it clean. Right? Clean looking so we don't expose all the gadgets and gadgets in there. Okay. Get those screwed back in. That was hilarious. Okay. We're going to have to remove more. I just realized. We got to get rid of all that. <laughs> so I think we just got to unscrew this turn signal cam to get to the back of it. see the back right there that's the back of the of this thing so it looks like this piece will just pry off of there with a small tool and see what happens so it looks like it'll come out but it runs into the back of this black thing so you're gonna have to remove these two screws you might be able to just force it out of the way so yeah this piece is soft enough to just kind of tweak it out of the way out from under there and you'll need to get something from the back side poke that out Boom. So these are the pieces we're removing. That's what we needed to get out of there. And that we're leaving that out too. This little black arm will have to... Ooh, sorry about my... But yeah, then we'll put that back into place. Put that arm back in right there. Screw down the three screws back in, and then we can put this, where to go, this plate back on. I push down all the way down into the groove. And you can just, or I can, loosen that up. 
Boom. put a shit ton torque on that that's not really what it's for but we'll get it going then you can put that guy back on like that should keep that net from falling all the way off now Hold on, hold on. There we go, now we're all the way down. Oh, you little. Huh, I can't get it down far enough. So, then, what has to be done? I got a couple threads of room here. You put a spacer behind there. Bring this forward. Now that's that one. Okay, so here's the dealio. You cannot put this on with the lock plate on. At least that's what I found. So, I had to take the lock plate off too. And now it works. It goes on and clicks off. <clears throat> the thing is, I have more room to go. With the lock plate off, you have, you know, more room to go. That would... That, Spring's got a little more room before this guy actually bottoms out on the shaft in there. So this could go lower by tightening this. And that's actually, <laughs> that's it right there actually. But I was worried that then that's just going to come undone. But we'll see. We'll see what happens over time. Um, and with that tightened all the way down and bottomed out last time the ring right here was bottoming out up against the lock plate you can see the shininess right here and right here and right there where I was I tried over and over and over and over and over to get it on and couldn't do it so I was able to finally get this off uh, remove the lock plate and the spring is going to sit right up against that shaft and still locks on still plenty of room in there now but it's ugly right I mean it's obviously ugly so we're going to have to do like the guy with the yellow car video and make a plate but now another giveaway too was that with that tightened all the way down, this right here was bottoming out on the inside. Let's see if I can get it to focus for you. There we go. So you can kind of see some a circular mark around there. We're just making contact in a couple spots right there and there. That's a little bit better. You can see that mark a little better now. So that was hitting up against that. Uh, <laughs> much like it still is now. Yeah. See, it's just teetering on there. So, 
let's see if we can get this nut all the way forward now. There, there's just barely room. No more, no more, uh, you know, teetering on the center shaft. So they don't give you much room in there. A little recess, just enough. So that might be the only option is to back the nut off all the way up against this ring or this lock pin thingy and just roll like that for a little while. There is still some pressure on the main spring back there. So it's hopefully you'll still have a tight enough steering column. All right, another huge upset and I am done for the night. Um, you can see at the top there, it's not perfectly circle. Right over there. So, what I have to do is take the file and file out some of that aluminum here because it's just not sitting down over that at all. So, <sighs> wow. That's a bright light. Well, that's going to be it for tonight, guys. Wherever you are, see you in the morning. It's the next morning. I've got a game plan for the steering wheel. And it goes a little something like this. After thinking about it, well, first, first things first, we're going to clean this up with some sandpaper so we can get that to fit over that recess fix that up and then as far as getting it installed it'll actually work right now as it is Here it is. I used uh, I used some sandpaper. I managed to do it without scuffing anything up. It's not still not perfectly round, but I got it to fit at least. So we're all bolted in. Now I guess you gotta there we go. Eh, we're in. We're in and steering. It's a little sloppier. But that's all in the coupler. If we get some more tension on the spring. It'll probably help out with that. You know what? With the ring, with that plastic ring on there, or not plastic, but the, you know, that trim ring on there, and the quick release coupler, you can't even see in there. I mean, you, you gotta get in here and you can kinda see around it if you go over here. But I don't think I'm gonna make a plate. No, I don't think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna leave it like that and uh, eventually find some washers to go behind the spring just to tighten the spring up. But uh, whew, that's actually pretty cool because I think that means, oh no, there she goes. I gotta put that steering wheel in the Suburban when she gets back and then we're done.
Both true.